Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a recommendation style video and a very specific one at that. That's right, today I'm going to be recommending some of the weirdest books I have ever read. Now, to be honest, I love a weird book. I love a strange setting, a strange atmosphere, a strange writing style. I love to be surprised by the plot and the direction of the story and I would say all of these books really fit the bill. I have a mix here of fantasy, speculative fiction, and just regular literary fiction. But before we dive into the recommendations themselves. First, a word from this video sponsor, which is Casetify. I'm so excited to be working with Casetify. Not only did they send me this very exciting package, I'm so looking forward to unbox with y'all, but I am in dire need of a new phone case. Mine is quite literally falling apart. I keep finding like bits of it all around my house. So this sponsorship could not come at a better time, especially because Casetify is known as the world's most popular tech accessory brand known for their protective cases and their global collaboration. So let's go ahead and open this up and see the incredible cases that are now entering my life. First and foremost, they sent me, and I will do a close-up, a phone charm, and it's a bunch of little mushrooms. I am quite literally obsessed with this. I also love the green. We know I'm a big green stan. This itself that the phone cases came in quite literally looks like a beautiful present. Oh my gosh, the mushroom theme continues. I am so in love. So the first case I have to show off is this incredible mushroom case. This is immediately going on my phone. And then I also have this stunning green case and then another green case that is customized with my name on it. The other really cool thing about Casetify is they also upcycle phone cases and they have recycled about 160,000 cases to date. Basically, they take old phone cases and turn them into new phone cases, making sure they have a circular process. And because when it comes to phone cases, protection is key, Casetify cases protect up to a 21.3 foot drop. So let's see. And just like that, Matilda is okay. If you guys want to check out Casetify, which has over 2,000 designs, ensuring you'll be able to find something for your taste and style, I of course have an offer code if you go to casetify.com slash project. You'll be able to get 15% off your order. I'll also have that linked down below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive back into the video. First book I have to recommend, I quite literally can barely tell you the synopsis because one, Reading the synopsis gives you very little about what this book is about. And two, the book is about the journey. You know what I mean? And that book is Pure Nessie by Susanna Clark. This little book is probably one of the strangest books I've read in quite a long time but it's also one of the most beautiful books, imaginative and atmospheric stories I've also read in a long, long time. As I mentioned, this book is best knowing as little as possible going into it. The fact that you and also our narrator doesn't really know much about what is going on and the discovery of who our character is and also his surroundings is a big part of this plot. And that murkiness also adds a bit of a thriller element to this book as well. What I will say, it follows our main character who lives in a house, a very peculiar house that has lots of floors that he has explored and documented. It's also full of statues and lots and lots of mysteries. This is such a winding journey. I loved every single second of it. I read the entire thing in one day because I had to know what in the world was going on. So if you want something that is immersive and beautiful and also obviously weird, this is a great book to read. The next book I have to recommend is Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. This is the first book to the Books of Babel series. I would say this fantasy quartet is just one of the most original original fantasy quartets I've ever read. This is very much high fantasy, but the setting, the writing style, the characters, the journey of it all though, is a very different experience than what you usually get within a high fantasy story, which is why I think this series is so fantastic. And not only houses a really fascinating magic system, great characters, and obviously a very riveting plot, but the setting and the environment and the world of this book is so strange and whimsical, it will pull you right in. But if you're not familiar with the Books of Babel series. First one opens with one of our main characters, Senlin, arriving at the Tower of Babel. Senlin has always dreamed of visiting this very notorious and famous place. It's this huge tower comprised of thousands of floors, as well as thousands upon thousands of people who live here, and he's thrilled to be able to explore it with the one he loves most, his new wife. But unfortunately, they get separated right when they arrive. From there, we watch Senlin as he enters this very dangerous tower in hopes of trying to find her. Exploring all of the different floors and just seeing the different political makeups and just different scenarios that could exist within this particular setting was fascinating. It was also terrifying. I love this series so much. 
highly unique, highly original, and obviously very, very weird. Next, I have a literary fiction option that is another quick read. I do feel like a lot of weird books tend to be short books, which also tends to be a lot of fun, and that is Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. This book is structurally one of the most unique books I've ever read because it is written like a screenplay. If you flick through this book, it reads like a script, but it doesn't stop there in terms of its strangeness because the stylization of the story is also very, very strange, but also incredibly impactful. And this obviously won the National Book Award, so it's a very lauded read as well. And in the story, we follow our main character, Willis Wu, and he does not view himself as a protagonist in his own life, but instead just as a background character or generic Asian man. Works within a very large Chinese restaurant, we're also a procedural cop show called Black and White films there every single day. He dreams of having the opportunity of making it big and possibly taking on the role that is the most famous type of role that someone who looks like him can have. That is Kung Fu Guy. And when Willis has the opportunity to actually take on this role, his world begins to change rapidly. This book explores race and identity in America and is particularly commenting on how that is explored through media. This book is a satire. It's a black comedy. The writer also writes for television. You can definitely see the influence of that in this book. The types of tropes and moments that he uses and calls upon to drive home his various points is just incredibly effective. This book is another one I feel like you'll read very, very quickly because you just want to understand what is happening. Another very strange book, but I would say like across the board, how it's written, the concept, uh, the structure of the tale itself. So weird, but so good. I wasn't going to talk about Bunny by Mona Awad. This this is a horror, literary fiction, dark academia-esque tale. It has a lot of genre tags for a good reason because it is a strange cocktail um, that honestly feels like an A24 movie in a book. This is just a ride from beginning to end. The book is set at Warren University and follows a very small cohort of graduate student writers and their very prestigious like poetry writers program. In the story, we follow our main character, Samantha. She feels very alone and very othered within this program because all of the other women that are a part of it are part of this very strange group called the bunnies. Um, and they basically are like this hyper feminine, very Heather-esque sort of clique. They call each other bunny and she despises them until one day they invite her to come to one of their study groups. And so begins an absolute spiral of an experience. This book is gory. It is strange. It is also very, very shocking. I also feel like the twists and turns, the whole thing felt almost a little camp in a way that I really, really enjoyed. It had a lot to say, I think about like femininity and just the general psyche, which I appreciated, but I also like put all of that aside, just found this book to be fascinating and I could not put it down. Obviously very weird. And I feel like if you like a dark academia or just like an academic setting, this is a great book for you, full of like really pretentious conversations and like point of views on literature and all of that. So a lot of fun. The next book I have to recommend is Mrs. Death and Mrs. Death. And oh my gosh, this book feels like an absolute fever dream. This book really blurs the line between writer and reader and death and existence and also just structurally another book that really plays with not only its prose but its stylization of the story itself. In this story we follow two main characters. The first is Death herself, a poor working class black woman who is tired. She has been working her entire existence to help shepherd souls into the afterlife with very little fanfare and thanks. We also follow Wolf Wilford who is a obsessed with death. After seeing Mrs. Death at a young age, Wolf Wilford has been kind of obsessively trying to chase her ever since. He's a writer and he really specifically wants to write down her experiences and her stories. So they begin to meet and Death begins to share her tales. But this is not a straightforward book. The obsession and the frenzy and the pursuit first from Wolf Wilford as a writer is very much center stage in this tale, but also his obsession with death. And again, the lines begin to blur between between the two characters. We are constantly shifting from first Wolf's point of view to then tales from Death's past to strange conversations. You begin to lose your sense of time and place, but you do begin to feel like this sort of frenzy throughout the entire reading experience. It's very, very excellent. It will definitely make you think. Obviously the topics that it does center can be rather triggering and this is definitely a dark approach to it. But this is for sure one of the strangest, most unique books I have ever read. It was another one that just 
really kept me thinking and absolutely kind of took my breath away. Next up, I have The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller, another very, very weird fantasy story with one of the most unique premises I have come across. Also another book where a large part of the experience while reading it is just trying to decipher what in the world is going on, what are the motivations of the characters, and how did we even get to this point? You know what I mean? So it's it's very much a journey story, if that makes sense. But this book primarily takes place in the Orchard House, which is a house of ill repute. In it, we follow the points of views of a variety of women who work here, but predominantly one woman named Charm. Charm is not only the madam of the Orchard House, but also the emperor's personal concubine. And at the beginning of the story, the emperor calls Charm to his bedside to tell her that he is dying and one of his terrible sons is responsible for it. And now it's up to Charm due to a sworn magical binding to basically solve his murder and also pick who is going to take the throne next. A concubine is basically thrown headfirst into the center of politics. But this book is not straightforward at all. Charm, again, is one of our main characters, but we also follow characters such as desire, shame, pain, justice. You clearly see a trend here. Uh, all of the characters kind of center around a specific emotion and also tie back to a very murky figure in this book. The magic and just the style of this book is a strange one and again the journey of the story is incredible. I also really appreciate that this book centers a house of ill repute. Again, I feel like these types of workers are very rarely centered in any story and especially fantasy, and I feel like the author really explores that quite a bit. The last book I have to recommend is When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, a speculative fiction release by this author. I love this author's writing and the concept of this one was just honestly stunning, and I also feel like the execution of it was very successful as well. This book is set in a world exactly like our own, except for one very significant difference. And that is when a person has enough rage anger, fear, they can magically transform themselves into a dragon. And specifically, the people who often transform themselves into dragons are women due to very obvious circumstances throughout the course of history. This has been kept very quiet for a long time, but there was one event of mass dragoning that was so large that society could no longer kind of turn a blind eye to the situation. That mass dragoning happened in 1955. And in this book, we follow our main character, Alex, who is a young girl kind of growing up in the aftermath of this mass targeting and she also loses someone to it. Her aunt, who she was very, very close to, her aunt was also more boisterous, loud, and had kind of a stronger personality, and her mother, though, decided to stay behind. This book documents a large portion of Alex's life. It's kind of written like a diary, kind of like a biography, but intermixed, there's all these really interesting, like, scientific articles and just uh, research into what mass dragoning is, the political response to mass dragoning, just general outcry to mass dragoning. And alongside that, we see Alex's journey to herself, understanding her sexuality, raising and helping her sister come into her own. This book will make you so angry, and it's supposed to, because obviously anger and rage is a large part of the story and the actual transformation that can occur. And just the concept of all of these dragons flying around the world because people got so furious by societal ills that they just gave up and transformed is honestly just a great idea. Kelly Barnhill's writing is honestly fantastic, and I just think conceptually this is such a great read to pick up. Alrighty guys, those are some of my favorite and strangest books I've ever read. Please let me know down below some strange books you love, as I would love to know, and I will see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye!